Welcome back to Halloween Horror Reviews 2023. I cannot believe that with each exceeding review that we're just inching closer and closer to the end of the month. And it's, I'm kind of getting started already because this is my favorite thing to do every single year. And I have been having the greatest time with this particular review this year. And I know I keep saying this without every single video, and I genuinely hope that you guys have a great time, even though I know you all might be getting annoyed with me saying this, but I hope you guys are enjoying this year's reviews because I am having such a great time talking about these particular movies with these year's reviews. When it comes to this particular movie, this is a movie that I had not watched prior to my, my most recent rewatch. I had not seen this movie in years. When I was rewatched this movie as of recently, it was like I was watching this movie for the very first time. Moving on with today's review, I'm going to be talking about 2009's Coraline, directed by Henry Selick and the first stop motion animation film from Laika. In Coraline, we follow a character named, well, Coraline, voiced by Dakota Fanning, who, with her family, she moves into, let's just say, a pretty drab, a dull and they kind of depressing us and Coraline is not really very very happy there especially considering that her parents are working on a brand new catalog that they have been working on for the longest time Coraline has been feeling kind of depressed until she discovers an alternative world that's hidden by a door in her house that leads her to a different place in which her parents and her surroundings are much, much happier. However, as time goes along, she soon discovers that there is a sinister secret behind this door in her house. Alrighty guys, so let's get into Coraline. David! <laughs> this is a movie that, to say the least, I cannot describe to you all the wonder that Coraline is. I need to talk about the first time I saw Coraline because the first time I saw Coraline was actually a very special experience for me. I believe I was about to go into my, if I'm not mistaken, either my, it was probably my sophomore year of high school if I'm not mistaken, but anyways, in summertime, my mother and mine had taken my brother and I on a weekend vacation to Atlanta. This place actually had a built-in movie theater, and the movie theater was particularly amazing by this towards the imagination, but it was just a nice little movie theater that you could go to every single night with some really nice programming. There was one day where I was looking to the programming and I saw that Coraline was being shown, and it was a movie that wanted to see for a very very long time because the trailers looked absolutely amazing so that afternoon my brother and I went to go to the movies and I think we were what there was that many people in the movie theater and as soon as it ended my brother and I turned to each other were going like that was great when I was rewatched this movie a couple of nights ago given all I had not seen it in at least five years it was as if I was experiencing the wonder and the enchanting spell that Coraline is, because man, to say the least, Coraline is such a beautiful experience. It is such an amazingly crafted film that easily over 10 years later holds up, like with Carrie, like a fine wine. All of the performances here are fantastic. Whether it's Dakota Fanning as Coraline, Terry Hatcher as her mother or as the other mother, John Hodgman as Coraline's father. Also, Keith David voices the cat in this movie. Keith freaking David voices the cat in this movie. Not to mention Ian McShane voices a character freaking Blackbeard voices a character in this movie. If there's one thing in particular that holds up so well with Coraline, it is the absolutely stunning stop motion animation. To this day, Coraline is such not only a beautiful looking film, but the stop motion animation is just a wonder in itself. And once again, this was directed by Henry Selick, the same man who brought us 
Nightmare Before Christmas, which is, by the way, my favorite musical of all time. Henry Selleck's style combined with Neil Gaiman's story, which, by the way, just to clarify, I have not read the story, I have not read the book, but I do want to read it just to see how it compares to this movie, although, from what I've read, the story isn't particularly a long story, but it's a story I still want to read nonetheless. Not just the stop-motion animation, but the details in every single frame, whether it comes down to the beautiful white shots, the close-ups, and seeing just the craftsmanship with every single frame of detail in this film, and what you have here is a wonder of an animated film with brilliant directing and brilliant writing, and man, knowing that Henry Selleck went from making Now I'm Over Christmas, James the Giant Peach, Coraline, one to one wild. I mean, this guy's homography is absolutely incredible. Henry Selleck is a man that's just constantly giving us great work after great work after great work. And I'm not going to guys want to say this. Coraline may not be my favorite film of Henry Selleck. That's still to me, well, number for Christmas. But man, Coraline is such a close second. It's not even funny. This particular thing I'm about to talk about here is something that I noticed as I was re-watched the film as of recently. It's how the film and how the story slowly evolves from being a dark fantasy film to a dark horror film. Now, not dark in the way that's going to tear children because this is definitely a film that can be enjoyed by all audiences, absolutely, especially in that incredible third act. Seeing how Coraline journey going through this alternative world and seeing how everything is this happy world at first but then it slowly and slowly turns before showing something absolutely sinister makes it for such a brilliant turn that when I was rewatching this as recently I was just going like that is brilliant. Not only how the story evolves, but how the character designs evolve. I mean, I thought this in particular was absolutely brilliant. Seeing how Coraline's other mother evolves from a character in a witch, I mean, the buttons were creepy enough, but going from this perfect vision of what Coraline wanted her to be, and then slowly evolving into that freaking spider lady. Her other father... And seeing how that freaking face just starts becoming undone. Brilliant. 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 What I absolutely about the horror elements is that even though this movie starts to reveal the horror side of it, it's never too frightening. I feel like that Coraline in a certain way is a great gateway in a certain way to horror films for little kids. Especially the little kids We'll definitely find this movie not only engrossing, but wonderful and imaginative, but scary enough for them to not actually have nightmares that night. When I was rewarded this film as of recently, one particular thing stood out, and that is the gorgeous, and I mean the gorgeous musical score by... I can't remember his name, I'm going to look his name up right now because I feel really bad. I apologize because I'm about to butcher your name. Bruno Kuleas, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, a beautiful and a wondrous score that from the moment that you watch this movie, it is a score combined with beautiful visuals that immediately suck you in. I mentioned this earlier, but I have to bring this up again, Coraline's third act is awesome to say the least. The deconstruction of the other dimension I thought was again so cool but so imaginative and once you see Coraline going back into her own reality and the suspense by the way of seeing that hand going after Coraline my freaking god it is awesome. The ending to Coraline itself Beautiful ending. Just a beautiful ending. Nuff said. Happy parents, you old fuck! <laughs> Nothing against the movie itself. Coraline isn't quite my favorite film, but I like it to me. That's Kubo and the Two Strings. But again, that's nothing at this movie at all. So overall, Coraline, to describe it with one word, is wonderful. It's full of creativity imagination and considering that Coraline was like his first film not just stop-motion animation but just the first film period Leica absolutely 
knocked it out of the park. Coraline is an absolutely wonderful film, and I am absolutely going to give Coraline a 5 out of 5. This is such a great film to watch during spooky season for the entire family. So comment down below and let me know, have you guys seen Coraline? What did you think of it? Let me know below. If you guys want to follow me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I'm also on Twitch. So if you guys want to follow me on all those social media platforms, all the links and the years names are in the description below. I hope you all enjoyed my review of Coraline. If so, please hit that like button, all subscribe, and don't forget that notification bell for my latest review goes live. If you guys want to see my previous two reviews, please click it right there or right there. And of course, until my next review of my Halloween Horror Beast 2023 goes live, I will see you all next time.